Greatest in strength and deeds of prowess is Tulkas, who is surnamed Astaldo the Valiant. He came last to Arda to aid the Valar in the first battles with Melkor. He delights in wrestling and in contests of strength, and he rides no steed, for he can outrun all things that go on feet, and he is tireless. His hair and beard are golden, and his flesh ruddy. His weapons are his hands. He has little need for either the past or the future, and is no avail as a counselor, but is a hearty friend. Hail and well met, my friends. Joisten here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be talking about Tulkas the Strong, who is the champion of the Valar and is one of my favorites among the Valar. If you have watched this channel in the past, then you'll know that Tulkas has become a channel meme, because he is just absurdly awesome. <laughs> I'll leave some related and helpful articles and videos in the description and cards above for more information. My friends, thank you all for joining me today as we talk about the legend himself, Tulkas. Let us begin our tale. Tulkas, the name meaning steady or firm in Quenya, was the last of the Valar and Ainur to come into Arda, arriving some 1499 Valian years after the others in the world. His Valoran name is Tulukastas, meaning the golden-haired. Originally, he was also called Ender, according to Tolkien's notes. His surname, Astaldo, means the Valiant in Quenya. He was quick to laugh and was powerful in wrath, as he was so powerful and mighty that he needed no weapon as his hands availed him enough, nor did he need any steed as he could outrun all things that go on foot. In my mind, he was the Vala of bodybuilding. But ultimately, his job came to fight for the Valar, to be their champion, as Thor was for the Norse gods. Our champion here delighted in wrestling and fighting. He was a hardy friend and thought not of the past or future, but much about the present moment. He was not one to give counsel or wisdom, for he was a being of action. His hair was golden and his skin was ruddy. His laugh was loud and strong as well as persistent, being in both sport and war. And his laugh became a dreaded sound to Melkor, for Tolkas's wrath could dispel cloud and darkness as he was the most warlike of the Valar. So it was when he first entered Middle-earth. During the early Valian years of the world, up until Tulkas came, there was the first war between the Valar and Melkor. Tulkas heard of the war in Arda when he was still outside of it, and before the Valar could be defeated, Tulkas the Strong descended unto the world and filled it with his laughter. <laughs> Melkor fled before the wrath and laughter of the mighty being hating Tolkas ever after. And thereafter came the spring of Arda. Tolkas remained in the world and became one of the Valar, and the two lamps were created and things were made according to the will of the Valar, and in these deeds of creation, Tolkas ceaselessly gave his strength. In this time when there was peace in Arda and the Valar dwelt in Elmarin, while Melkor fled to the outer darkness, Tolkas wedded Nessa the Dancer, sister of Arome the Hunter, Tulkas and Arome were mighty amongst the Valar, Tulkas more so in physical strength, but Arome was more dreadful in rage than was Tulkas. They wedded during a great feast, and being weary and content with things, Tulkas slept. This was the hour in which Melkor made his move to return to Arda, creating Atumno his fortress in the north with his servants. Eventually and suddenly, Melkor and his servants came out to war and destroyed the two lamps, marring Arda. In the confusion of all things, Melkor escaped, hearing the voice of Manwe as the mighty winds and the trembling earth beneath the feet of Tulkas, who was ready for round two. But Melkor made it to Atumno before Tulkas could overtake and overpower him, and there he hid. Many years and ages of the Valar progressed, even as they created the two trees and Valinor. Angband was wrought and ruled by Sauron in the east in Middle-earth. Then a council of the Valar was held, for the hour drew nigh when the children of Iluvatar, elves and men, would begin to wake up and dwell in the world, according to Yavanna and Arome. They had to decide what to do about Melkor. Tulkas, of course, was impatient and wished to make war swiftly, asking if not they had rested from strife over long and if their strength was renewed. He questioned whether one alone would contest with them forever. 
But Mando said that there was time yet before the awakening of the children, and that they should come in darkness, looking to the stars and to Varda. Eventually, however, there came a time when the elves indeed awoke, and Arome came across them and reported as much to the Valar. Thence Manwe held another council at the Ring of Doom, announcing the will of Iru Aluvatar, that the Valar should regain mastery and guardianship of Arda from Melkor, for the sake of the elves. Tolkas was glad at this, and thus began the Battle of the Powers, or the War for Sake of the Elves. Near the end of the war, after a great siege at Atumno, the gates were eventually thrown down and Melkor hid in the uttermost pit of that fortress. Then came Tulkas. He stood as the champion of the Valar and wrestled with Melkor, casting him down on his face and binding him with the chain and Gynor that Aule had wrought. Melkor was then made a captive of the Valar, led by Tulkas, and the world had peace for a time. But there came a time when Melkor had served his sentence, and dwelt amongst the Valar after he was released. But Olmo was not deceived by Melkor's apparent change, and Tolkas clenched his fists whenever he saw Melkor go by, for Tolkas was slow to wrath, but also slow to forget his wrath, and he did not agree with the decision to release him. The true nature of Melkor would come forth eventually, and the lies he had spread throughout the uttermost west would be laid bare. In a council where Feanor answered for his harsh words and deeds, even against his own half-brother, Fingulfin, the Valar became aware of the present malice of Melkor. During the council, Tulkas left right away to lay his hands upon his enemy and bring him to judgment. Man, he's so cool. <laughs> But Melkor knew his plans and devices were revealed, and so he hid himself, to the vain pursuit of Tulkas. There came a time when Melkor went to Formenos, the home of Feanor, and he feigned friendship with the elf. But Feanor remembered his hatred for Melkor, and bade him go. Finwë, Feanor's father, was fearful and sent word to Valimar in Valinor. When the messengers came to the council of the Valar, who were before their own gates, Tulkas and his brother-in-law Arome sprang up and set out in pursuit of Melkor, who had then left the uttermost west. They did not find him, going far northward in the land almost to the Helkaraxe, to no avail, for it seemed to Manwë he would go to one of his old strongholds in Middle-earth. Rather, Melkor would seek Ungoliant, and together the two would destroy the two trees of Valinor. After that, Tulkas and Arome would have caught them, if not for the Unlight or Black Cloud of Ungoliant as they escaped Valinor. The steed of Arome, Nahar, and the speed of Tolkas could not overcome the confusion of the Unlight, and Tolkas was one caught in a black net during night, powerlessly beating the air around him in vain. In a short time after all this, the Valar asked Feanor to surrender the three Somerils as to restore the life of the trees with the light of the Somerils and Tulkas grew impatient for Feanor to say yes or no, for who should deny Yavanna, of whose work gave light to the Silmarils in the beginning? Of course Feanor would not do this, and this is the last action we read of Tulkas and the Elder Days at that council. Feanor, before his terrible oath, said to the Noldor that they would endure longer than Tulkas in the pursuit of Melkor, who he named Morgoth, which is debatable, for Tolkas always hated and tried to hinder Melkor when he was allowed to, even if he did not search the ends of the world for him. Now it is possible that Tolkas and his strength were needed during the War of Wrath to ensnare Melkor at the end, but in the Silmarillion that is not explicitly stated. That is what we know of Tolkas from the Silmarillion, but the Lost Road and other writings say that Tolkas would once more oppose Melkor during the Dagor Dagoroth, the last battle and he would play a large role in the defeat of the Dark Lord, alongside Turin Turambar and Aeonwë. But Dagor Dagoroth may not be canon. For the long ages of the world, Tulkas would remain in Valinor as their champion, but I imagine after the defeat of Melkor, he likely was more joyous and playful in Valinor, laughing, wrestling, and feasting as he might like, now that his foe was outside of the confines of the world. So ends our tale of Tolkas, the champion of the Valar. From his story, we see how the joy and fun one has for life itself may repel the evils that could destroy such life. Rather than always growing angry and grim with matters that face us, 
we should give our strength and laughter to meet those matters head on as we may, just like Tolkas did. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video about our boy Tolkas. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about this mighty Vala? For me, I think Tolkas is just so awesome and funny, and he is such a unique character in Tolkien's works, definitely making him one of my favorites among the Valar. And every time I work out, I hope to make Tolkas proud. <laughs> Please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for Discord server and podcasts. Links are in the description below. I also wanted to give a shout out and thanks to our Valar tier patrons over on Patreon. Adrian Delator, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, Lane Grimes, Mr. Vat Nadal, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, Kyrie Kawaii, and Felix Ellerm Norton. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on the Sons of Feanor. Everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.